High intensity interval training has just gotten butchered. By the time we get this distilled information to us for practical use, it's completely wrong. The fact is, high intensity interval training is effective, extremely effective, but it has to be done properly, otherwise it's 100% ineffective. We're not getting the actual response that we want from the hit in the first place. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the three biggest glaring mistakes with high intensity interval training. Like, the mistakes that really aren't anybody's fault other than just information getting completely convoluted as it trickles on down the line. So let's go ahead, let's get into some interesting science that's gonna revolutionize how you do your hit. And I promise, if you apply the principles of what I'm teaching, you're gonna have amazing results with your hit, unlike you've ever had before. You are tuned into the Intermittent Leading Performance, Nutrition, and Fat Loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. I wanna make sure you hit that little red subscribe button and also hit that bell icon so you know whenever I'm going live or whenever I'm posting a brand new video or live broadcast. All right, without further ado, let's get into what you can do to change your hit. Now this first one is the biggest and boldest one. This is the most important thing that you can possibly do when it comes down to your hit training. And that is stop doing equal intervals of like one minute on, one minute off. Okay, high intensity interval training is not about just working hard for a set amount of time and then not working hard for a set amount of time. The goal with high intensity interval training is to elicit as much of a metabolic stress on yourself as you possibly can in the shortest amount of time and then allow yourself to recover as long as you need to recover in order to be able to push it 100% again. Let me give you an example of this. First, I'll tell you the wrong way and then I'll explain the right way. The wrong way is this. I'm gonna go on the treadmill and I'm gonna sprint as fast as I can for 60 seconds. And then I'm gonna step off the treadmill and I'm gonna wait for 60 seconds. And then I'm gonna do it again. 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off. 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off. Okay, now let me explain the right way. And then I'll give you the difference in how it actually is working. The right way is hopping on that treadmill, sprinting for 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds at all out intensity. Then stepping off the treadmill, and recovering for however long it takes for you to feel like you can push it 100% again. The rest period doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long your rest period is. The only thing that matters is that you rest long enough to be able to push it to your max. You see, high intensity interval training is all about tapping into the anaerobic system. We want to tap into that anaerobic system and we want to tap into it all the way. You want to think of your interval training more like weight training in a way. Like weight training, you're not going for time, you're just going until you fail. Well, you want to do the same thing with HIT. You want to push it all the way until you fail and then you just recover however long it takes to be able to do it again. I promise you, you're not able to go 100% or even 95% for 60 seconds. You really don't want to be pushing it longer than like 15, 20 seconds. That's the max that you're going to go and then just recover however long you need to. The effects of high intensity interval training are with what happens after the workout from the metabolic stress, not with the calories you burn during the workout. And that is giant mistake number one and make sure you change that one. Okay, the next one is not adding plyometrics into the mix. Okay, plyometrics are simple. Plyometrics are where you have a little bit of a bounce mechanism, right? A little bit of a bounce factor to your workout. So a good example is like a plyometric push-up, where you kind of bounce at the top of your push-up. Or a squat jump, where you land into your squat and then you pop yourself up and you do a little jump. Plyometrics don't have to be these extreme, crazy bouncing movements. They're not dangerous. You're just adding a little bit of a bounce and it's for good reason. You see, it's all about conditioning the body to be able to rapidly contract its muscles more. So when you go into an eccentric contraction, and you actually load yourself with a good stretch, you wanna get your body to be able to rapidly contract as fast as it can after that. That's how you build strength. So envision this, in between your eccentric contraction, let me give you an example. When you come down from your squat, that's the eccentric contraction. When you come up, that's the concentric. Muscles are stretching and then contracting. Well, you have a period of time between the stretch and the contraction. That's called the amortization phase. During that amortization phase, we can lose a lot of energy. So if we squat and then down at the bottom, that amortization phase, the time between the stretch and the contraction is too long, through simple physics, we lose energy. We lose that contractile energy. We want it to be able to stretch and rebound really quick. That's how we get power and force. And the more power and force that we have, the tighter contraction, the more muscle recruitment, the more cellular recruitment, the better the workout, the better the recovery, the better the protein synthesis. 
The only way we can condition that is by doing more plyometrics. It's pretty powerful stuff. You don't have to do much. You just add them into your workouts. Plyometric push-ups, a little bit of battle ropes, a little bit of squat jumps here and there just to make sure you get a little bit better. But don't take my word for it. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism that took a good look at this. It took a look at three groups. A group that just did high-intensity interval training, a group that did plyometrics with high-intensity interval training, and of course, a control group. Okay, what they wanted to determine was what the overall outcome was in terms of just an overall training regime. So they did this with 68 people. It was a good sized study. And at the end of the study, they found some interesting results. They found that both training groups, not the control group, but both training groups had improvements in their biochemical and their physical fitness sort of uh, needs, right? Like they had improvement, they saw change. But what they did notice even more was that the plyometric and HIT group saw a larger improvement in their actual muscle mass, their lean body mass. They saw a 3% improvement over the other group just by adding plyometrics, everything else was the same. That's wild. Okay, additionally, they saw a huge reduction in plasma glucose, which means that they were actually metabolizing food better. Therefore, their insulin levels were lower. Therefore, they were actually able to get the nutritional outcome that they want from their workout. Okay, additionally, there was a big improvement in what's called their adenopectin to leptin ratio. I'm gonna save this for another video, but basically it means that they were able to have less leptin signal more fat burning meaning they didn't have to do cheat meals. They didn't have to keep, they could actually continue to reduce their calories and have a fat burning effect even if their metabolism were to slow down simply because of this hormonal shift. Lastly, a 22% improvement in power and strength. That's huge. With more power comes more strength. And with more strength comes more muscle recruitment. With more muscle recruitment comes more protein synthesis. More protein synthesis comes lean muscle, which therefore leads to a faster metabolism. And now let's go ahead and talk about number three. This one you have to be doing. It's incorporating your upper body, okay? People think that HIT just needs to be sprinting or being on a bike. They forget about the fact that it can be functional, it can be fun. You can do those kettlebell swings, you can do the upper body movements like the battle ropes, you can do plyometric push-ups. And here's the thing, there's some interesting science. In fact, the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy published a study, they found that test subjects that were doing upper body workouts had more of a sympathetic nervous system response, meaning they had more adrenaline, more noradrenaline, more epinephrine, and all the other good things that come along with fat burning than the group that was working their lower body. Why is this? It's simply because the heart has to work harder to pump blood to the upper body because there's more peripheral resistance. What that means is that the muscles in the upper body are tightly packed with less blood vessels. That means that in order to get a lot of energy out to the extremities like our arms, our heart has to work really hard and have a lot of power with each beat simply to push blood through these tightly compacted blood vessels. So that's why whenever you're doing battle ropes, you get so winded even compared to like sprinting or box jumps or anything like that, simply because you're having to force a lot of blood through small little teeny capillaries. This is really powerful and it's how we can get our heart rate up so high. So when we look at like the overall power output that we get, like with the stroke volume and how much blood is being pushed out, we see big improvements. So very good for cardiovascular improvement, but also very good just to get your heart rate up in a shorter amount of time. If you're sick of running for 15 or 20 seconds because it's hard on your joints, Try doing some battle ropes. You'll get to fatigue a heck of a lot faster and you'll save your joints a little bit or do some plyometric push-ups. The point is, apply all of these things and it'll improve your hit in ways that you never thought possible. You will now be able to get into the gym in seven, 10 minutes on days that you're doing hit. Like seriously, you can go in there, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, get out of there and get the job done. And that's exactly what we are after versus having to slave away and sweat your butt off on a treadmill, pounding your knees and hips. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos and make sure you comment below with any ideas for future videos. I'll see you on the next one.